Those who follow research on electric universe models have seen how pre-space age ideas have too often limited innovation in the physical sciences. A similar pattern of ideological conditioning, it seems, occurs in the life sciences as well, in domains such as physiology and organic chemistry. Many useful studies in biophysics were published in journals not indexed in Medline or other biomedical databases, leaving many scientists unaware of crucial discoveries in this field of biology. In this series, we will focus on the lesser-known contributions of electrophysics to these fields. As discussed in a Thunderblog some weeks ago, the Electric Universe is but one of many explorations that bring together old and new evidence for the purpose of honing human knowledge. Here we consider the inconsistencies of current theories and take up some of the latest findings in the life sciences. At times, we will consider the seemingly impossible. Biologist Luca Turin does an excellent job of this, and the hypotheses he has arrived at paint an increasingly electric view of familiar biological processes. One of his more startling experiments, and one of the clearest, rides atop his research on the electronic properties of pharmaceuticals. In a presentation at a past Google-sponsored scientific conference, Luca Turin explored new ideas in the science of benzodiazepines and GABA receptors. Using a process of scanning through recent scientific history with a detective's eye, he pointed to many clues strongly suggesting a new model of this anatomy. Biologists aren't used to thinking of electrons crossing membranes, he said, referring to the perception that proteins are insulators, not conductors. But as a biologist turned physicist, Luca finds it an interesting coincidence that effective benzodiazepines all share a high electron affinity. This seems to allow them to actually pull an electron from the long protein that bridges the cell membrane at a GABA receptor site, transforming it into a conductor. Such contemplations on the electronics of consciousness also led Turin and two colleagues to carry out a very illustrative experiment. If anesthetics could cause changes in electron currents of proteins, one could actually use electron spin resonance to detect these changes. They did just that, using fruit flies, with some mutated in ways that would control for other biological sources of notable ESR signals, such as melanin. Under general anesthetic, the increase of free electron spins was highly salient, greater than any signal caused by free radicals. Fruit fly mutants with resistance to key anesthetics had clearly reduced ESR signals, or no signal at all. Luca Turin is especially known, however, for his work in the perfume industry, where he uses a new model of the science of scent to arrive at molecular formulas that take other chemists in the industry far more money and effort to find. In a TED Talk presentation, he recounted the problems with the current theory of olfaction, and he connected little-known threads of evidence that suggest a new model. Where it was before quite rationally assumed that the human body could not construct its senses to mimic the behavior of a machine as large as a spectroscope, it is now conceivable that such a structure could exist using biological components on a nanoscale. In this new understanding of the science of smell, the overall electronic vibrational profile of a molecule's atoms can potentially better predict its odor than previously considered traits of shape. In scientific lectures and new experiments, Luca has collected useful evidence to illustrate this effect. But the best proof of this concept may be the day-to-day -day effectiveness of synthesizing new scents by their desired molecular frequency. One needs only to calculate the vibrational spectrum of a desired scent molecule, and then calculate a synthetic molecule that will match this electronic footprint. There have been criticisms of this model, articles with titles such as Implausibility of the Vibrational Theory of Olfaction, and an opinion piece published in the Proceedings of the National Academy laying a controversial smell theory to rest. But as we have seen in our own scientific coalition, Criticisms can sometimes fly quite wide of the actual theory they attempt to critique. Dr. Turin responded to the former article, which unfortunately seemed to provide very little sound logical assessment of the vibrational theory. The latter article had a very different tone altogether. 
The style of Vossholz laying a theory to rest article is somewhat reminiscent of Michael Shermer's view of the electric universe model. With section headings like no evidence for vibration-based odorant receptors and the curious persistence of a radical theory, it seemed driven to paint a very particular narrative, one independent of the full body of evidence informing the issue. The author, Leslie Vossel, once described her interpretation of the issue to the BBC thusly. I like to think of the vibration theory of olfaction and its proponents as unicorns. The rest of us studying olfaction are horses. The problem is that proving that a unicorn exists or does not exist is impossible. This debate on the vibration theory or the existence of unicorns will never end. But the very important underlying question of why things smell the way they do will continue to be answered by the horses among us. First off, I'm not familiar with the long-standing existence of the debate on unicorns, but that aside, it is curious that she chooses to regard receptor sites sensitive to molecular electronics as something beyond the ability of science to validate or refute, especially when she seems to take the opposite stance in her article and say that science has soundly laid the theory to rest. We should note that synthesizing aromas by electronic properties could potentially cause major disruption to the fragrance industry. One concern I had when reading her narrative was that it sounds rather a lot like astroturfing. Astroturfing is the creation of an artificial grassroots opinion about an issue, one which appears individually motivated and less biased than the group with a vested interest that sponsors it. Astroturfing often focuses its energy on declaring that one side is a small fringe that is foolish for doubting a particular authority. This strongly dismissive tone clashes with the exploratory and experiment-focused discourse that should characterize science. It is in light of such facts that I noted the statement accompanying Vossel's article on the Proceedings of the National Academy website. Conflict of Interest Statement The author is a member of the Scientific Advisory Board of International Flavors and Fragrances Incorporated and receives compensation for her services.